Hi, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be discussing the cons of owning ferrets or a ferret, just the cons of ferret ownership in general. Um, I will briefly touch on the pros at the end of the video. Um, the reason that I'm going to start with the cons is because I really think that if you're considering going out to get a ferret, that it is really, really important that you know 100% what you're getting into. And I think if you don't have a full picture of ferret ownership, then, um, you know, you may be in for a surprise. <laughs> so I don't want that for you. Unfortunately, the con list is longer than the pro list. It just is what it is. And I personally could find more cons than pros. It doesn't mean that I would ever not own ferrets. It doesn't mean that I don't love my ferrets. It just is the reality of the situation. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. So con number one. Ferrets are expensive. <laughs> In my opinion, I feel like ferrets are expensive. I know for me, um, just food alone can be expensive, but we're gonna, I'm gonna take, let's just rewind and go all the way back to you are purchasing a ferret. So here's how this, this is where it went for me. So I purchased one ferret at a time. So when I first got my first ferret, Weasel, um, I got him at a pet store. And he cost me at that time, which was about three years ago, $199. Since then, the cost of ferrets at a big box chain store, from what I know, has gone up about $20. So we'll say $210 roughly to own a ferret, um, which I know I said 20, but I'm rounding down <laughs> a little bit. So we'll say $210 just to, own, just to bring a ferret home if you get it from a big box store. If you were to get it from a rescue, um, the prices on rescuing ferrets kind of range and it's kind of a very broad range. So it's really hard for me to kind of narrow down exactly the cost. I know that it can range from like $60 to like a hundred and some dollars. It really just depends on the rescue. Also same kind of thing would apply, I would believe to a breeder. Um, I think there may be like an average cost, but I do think the cost would would vary depending on breeders and depending on types of ferrets and lots of other variables. So let's just hypothetically say you get your pet from a pet store. So you got $200 for the ferret, then you need a cage to put that ferret in. The cage, a ferret nation cage, a double ferret nation cage, runs about $250 on Amazon. That's what I paid. Um, if you get the single, it's about half that price, but at the end of the day, you're still looking at about 100, between $125 to $250 just for the cage. So now you have $200 for the ferret, We'll say 250 for the cage, you're at 450. You gotta buy some food. We'll just, hmm, I don't know. I'll go off the food I buy. So I'll give you a month's supply of food for my ferrets, runs about $80. I could be really off on that. I've never actually stopped to calculate it monthly. I should probably do that. But I'm just gonna guesstimate on that. It could be more, it could be less. I'm pretty sure it could be more. Either way, we'll say $80 for fun. So then you want to buy some hammocks, you want to buy some toys, you want to buy a leash, you got all these things you want to buy, you brought your ferret home, you've dropped about $600, maybe, give or take, like I said, depending. If you buy four, two ferrets at a time, you can for sure immediately add another roughly $200. So just bringing your ferret home is uber expensive. Um, and then you have to take your ferret to the vet at least once a year. If everything goes as planned, your ferret doesn't eat anything, doesn't break anything, doesn't require any kind of emergency visits, any surgeries, anything. If all is smooth and perfect in the world, then, um, and it's one ferret, it's maybe like a uh, hundred bucks plus just for the visit and the shots. And then you get into flea medication. So you want to give them flea medication every month. That's 15 bucks per, per ferret. So um, ferrets in general just aren't cheap. And then if your ferret gets hurt, as such as my lovely little boy Weasel did, and he they break a leg, I know for Weasel, he broke his leg where they couldn't put a cast on it. So in order to do the surgery they did and have the external pin and all of the things that had to happen, that was $1,000. Um, so yeah, that's really costly. And that was really, really, really unexpected. And that can happen. Ferrets are very, very curious. They're always into stuff. They can get hurt easier, I feel like, than other animals. I also feel like because they tend to have a lot of blockage issues because they eat things that they're not supposed to, that can be really costly. Uh, toys, treats, all of that stuff really starts to add up. So that's the first con. Con number two. Two, two. Um, 
Ferrets are time consuming. They are very, very time consuming. If you're a person who is busy and has a lot of stuff going on and you don't have time to spend with your ferrets, and by time I mean a minimum of having them out of a cage at the very least four hours a day. I feel like I say this in so many videos, but the thing is that that, you know, take your ferrets out four hours a day, that's like a go-to generalized, very just generic answer. But the truth of the matter is, most ferret owners are gonna tell you that four hours out of a cage is absolutely not enough time out of a cage. So, I'm gonna be one of those ferret owners and I'm gonna say that while the standard answer is four hours, um, yeah, no, I'm gonna recommend that you take them out far more than that and, or at the very least, you allow them to be able to free roam, which, may be risky if you're not home. Some people may let ferrets free roam while they're home, but not while they're not home. Some people may have their home set up so ferret proof that they're able to allow their ferrets to roam when they are um, not at home. I personally don't do that. They have their own room. They are never, ever, ever, ever forced into a cage. However, um, they don't have free reign of my house, but they are time consuming. And I'll give you an example. I have to be to work at nine o'clock. I work an hour from home, so. I have to get up in the morning at 5.15 in order to make sure that my ferrets are fed, that they get to come out of that room. So while they have an entire room and they are not in a cage, I still feel very strongly that it's so important that they're around the family, that they're engaged, we engage with them, that they get outside of that room. If not, they will get bored, they will get depressed. They do not wanna live, even though out of a cage, in one room for always. That's just not okay either. So I, get up. I get up far earlier than I need to in order to make sure that my ferrets get to run around before I go to work. So I do that. I come home from work and when I get home from work, after I take my dogs outside, I immediately go upstairs. I open up the ferret room and out they come. They either come downstairs into the living room, into the kitchen. They go somewhere, wherever I'm at. And there's another several hours that they are engaging in around the family before they go back up to their room where they can run around and do whatever they want and they're safe but it's so important that they're with me. So while I can offer them a room where they're not in the cage, I would, it would be unfair for them to never see me. That's really just cruel. So it's very time consuming. And I have to take my ferrets and all of my animals for that matter into a account when I do anything um, at night, during the weekdays, or during the weekends, if I wanna go on vacation. At the end of the day, um, I can't just pack a bag, grab my two dogs, and go to the beach for two days. I cannot do that because I have ferrets. I cannot find someone or ask someone to, I'm sure I could find someone and pay them, but I can't ask someone that I love or know, that I trust, to come over to my house and spend eight hours playing with my ferrets. Um, I couldn't afford to pay someone to spend eight hours playing with my ferrets while I go on vacation. So. I take them with me and that's a whole nother expense and, and a lot of, of work and a lot of planning, a lot of packing, a lot of all kinds of preparation that goes into me going anywhere beside my home overnight um, or for long periods of time. So commitment to time and just having availability is so, 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 so important. So time is really one of those things that is a con. If you don't have time, ferrets may not be the best pet for you at all because you just won't be able to give them what they need or you'll be stuck restricting yourself from being able to do the things that you want to do. Another con is that ferrets get bored super easy. Um, so ferrets are so smart. They're so intelligent. But the downside to that intelligence and to that smartness is boredom. And if your ferrets don't, if you're not engaging or keeping them engaged or giving them something new or just playing with them or getting them outside of their routine to some degree or another, some way, somehow with a dig box, with whatever it is that, that you are doing to keep them engaged, they'll get bored. And when they get bored, a couple, there's a couple of things that can happen. They can get depressed. Um, and mopey or they can get destructive and they can get almost like angry um, and they can tear things up and they can get very bitey so when you're you know boredom in a ferret can be very disruptive to your household it can be disruptive to you it's not good for them um, it can cause a lot of problems basically they act out kind of like kids and they start to have behavioral issues or they um, like I said they get really depressed and you know that's not fair either so I know for me I'm always trying to come up with new things or new ways to keep them engaged. 
you know, sometimes I just have to spruce it up. I have to take them outside. I have to take them down into the, to the lower part of the house so they can run around. And so you're just constantly trying to figure out things to do with them. You're also, um, it can be costly. I know for me, trying to come up with different ideas or different ways to keep them engaged. I mean, I've, I have, I ordered this cat tent from Amazon that was over a hundred and it was like $120. Um, I got that because I, I wanted to have them engaged. They wanted to do something different. I own double play yards, each set, each play yard. Now I combine them together to make one, but each play yard is like $80. So it gets to be expensive trying to keep them entertained and try to have them have fun and things to do. Con number four, biting or nipping. Um, ferrets are known to be biters when they're babies. Um, they actually have a terrible, they get a terrible rap for being mean. And they get a terrible rap for being like, ferrets bite. Oh, they bite. They're mean. They're not mean. They do bite. Um, normally when they're young, they bite. For the most part, when your ferrets are really, really at their they bite the most is when they're babies. Um, they, you can absolutely teach your ferrets not to bite. However, with that being said, um, ferrets can bite really hard. I know that even though my ferrets are trained not to bite, when they get really, really, really excited, they will nip and even that hurts. Now, Weasel's really cute. He likes to pretend to bite, so he'll like grab my little hand, but he won't actually ever bite down. Whereas my girl ferrets, when they get like really excited about something, they nip. My ferrets don't bite to be mean. They don't, they're not aggressive. They went through that stage when they were babies, that whole testing the waters and trying to figure out, you know, that's what they do when they're babies. When their parents handle that when they're young. So when we get them and they're young, we have to handle that as well. Um, and there are ways to teach your ferrets not to bite. There's several methods. Um, I used the method of, I used a timeout method. <laughs> I know that sounds so crazy, but it worked and it worked really well. And I also, when they would go to bite when I, when they were younger, um, I would often not play with them with my hands. So I wouldn't use my hands as like a back and forth motion kind of thing, because that would cause them to chase my hand and then bite my hand. And I don't want them to bite my hand. I don't ever want them to see my hands as something that they is a toy and that they can bite on. So what I would do is I would always play with them with a toy so that my hands were not seen as a toy. So now that when they're older, they don't look at my hands as a as something that they can bite as a toy. So I I always 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 would replace my hands with toys um, just to make sure that I that they knew not to bite my hands. And it works and it worked great for us. And I don't have really any issues at all. I cannot tell you the last time I was bit in the hand by my ferrets. They were all babies the last time that happened. So, but they can be nippy. And that and I'll and I will roll con number four into con number five, which is ferrets, while they're great pets, they are not necessarily great family pets for families that have young, small children. Um, I have a nephew, he's the coolest little kid, he's eight years old, my ferrets really, really like him, but he is very, he's eight, so he's got a lot of energy. They have a lot of energy. Um, the more excited he gets, the more excited they get, he gets bit because he moves too fast or he so with ferrets you know first of all they don't see very well they um don't like sudden motion if i'm gonna lean in going over top my ferrets in a very fast motion often can freak them out and their response is to protect themselves or to bite so they're either going to retreat or they're not um i'm sure there's other ways that they react but for me particularly like to my girls particularly and they, my bear bear, my boy will retreat. Weasel, he could care less. He's just kind of in his own little world. But the girls, if you do a fast motion over top of them or you scare them in any way, even if it's an accident, they don't like that. And they don't understand it, even if it's not intentional or it's not done in a mean way, it scares them. They are this big, we are humongous. So with children, um, children tend to be too rough. They don't mean it. They, they absolutely don't. I don't believe for a second that little kids mean to be rough, but they are. They just, they move too fast and they're, they're too rough and the ferrets often end up getting aggressive even if it's not aggressive or if it's not aggressive biting, it's play biting. But you can't play bite a five-year-old. It hurts. It hurts when you play bite me. So young children and ferrets often are not such a great pair up. Um, I mean, I let my nephew and my ferrets play together, but I never do it without, they're never left alone with my nephew. And it's not because he's a bad kid or because they're bad ferrets. It's just because it's not really, 
it's not a good thing to do. It's not fair to put either of them in that situation. So you could absolutely have ferrets and young kids. You just need to, I just would recommend that you don't leave your ferrets alone with young kids. Now that rule obviously may not apply to everyone. I know that. I know that there's going to be ferrets who are great with young kids, just like certain dogs are great with young kids, certain cat, you know, that there's always going to be an exception to the rule. But as a general rule of thumb, young children and ferrets typically don't go hand in hand. Con number six is litter box training. While ferrets are absolutely capable of being litter box trained, not all ferrets are going to be perfect at this. Um, I know of no ferrets who use the litter box 100% of the time. However, I, well, I don't personally know of any ferret who uses a litter box 100% of the time. I am very, very confident that there are ferrets out there who are perfect at using the litter box. They never ever have accidents. I'm sure there's at least a few. And for those people, I am envious I, and I am congratulations to you because that is awesome. But for me, I can promise you that my ferrets absolutely are not perfect under any circumstances at using a litter box. So while they do use the litter box, I would feel confident in saying 90 to 95% of the time, there are times when they don't. Um, and so litter box training itself can be one of those things that is very time consuming. It is also requires a ton of patience and a ton of consistency. And if you don't do that over and over and over and over again with positive reinforcement, you absolutely cannot yell at your ferrets. They do not respond well to that. Um, that will absolutely ha have an opposite of impact or an opposite effect on whatever it is you're trying to do. So yelling at your ferrets will not create the ideal response that you think it will. It's going to actually worsen the situation. Um, it will not help your situation at all. Even the most litter trained of ferrets will have mistakes and they will poop on the floor. They will poop in the sides of the cage. They, it will happen. So if you're one of those people who have white carpet or you're very pristine and like immaculate things, um, just know that you may want to prepare. You could put linoleum pieces in the corners. They poop in corners. So you can put linoleum pieces in, in corners of your room or in their cage or whatever. However, you could protect your flooring or whatever you want to do. But just know that even though ferrets are trainable, to you, you could train them to use a litter box. That absolutely does not guarantee that they will always use a litter box. They are not a cat. Um, and they will absolutely make mistakes. And it will happen no matter what. It's just 99, I would say the majority of ferrets are not perfect at litter boxes. So that can be a downside. If your expectation is that you're going to litter box train your ferret and never have to worry about that again, you're wrong. They also regress. Um, sometimes ferrets will be litter, fully litter, they will be litter box trained. They do everything they're supposed to do. You bring a new ferret home. You bring a new baby home. That ferret gets bored. That ferret's mad at you. You've been in the cage too long. And that ferret regresses in litter box training. And the next thing you know, you're starting at square one a year after you had your ferret. <laughs> so um, just know that that kind of stuff happens and that can happen. So that's that. That's number six. Con number seven. Ferrets are smelly. <laughs> um, anyone who tells you that ferrets are not, don't have a scent or they don't smell, um, they're lying to you. <laughs> so while the smell may not bother you, it does not bother me, um, it doesn't mean it's not there. It's absolutely there. My house doesn't really stink like ferrets. You have to be pretty much in their room to kind of even smell their smell. The Their smell will get worse or does get worse or is overbearing if they're not properly taken care of. And that does not mean bathing. I When I say smell gets worse by not properly taking your, care of your ferret, that has zero to do with giving them a bath. Um, Basically, bathing your ferrets will absolutely not take the smell away. As a matter of fact, if you overbathe them, it can potentially make that smell worse. So trying to fix ferret smell with a bath is not going to work. But what will work is making sure their bedding is clean, their litter boxes are clean, their area is clean, their toys are clean. That kind of stuff will help with ferret smell. But just know that your ferrets have a, ferrets have a musky odor. It just is what it is. They have scent glands all over their body, um, even if they're descented as the pet store likes to tell you that they are, and they are, their scent sacs are normally taken out if you get them from a pet store. Um, the majority of their scent doesn't come from their scent sacs unless they're in heat or they're, it's mating season. So a majority of the scent of a ferret comes from the glands all, all around their body. So that is kind of where um, the smell comes from. So just know going into it that ferrets have a musty odor. Um, it is not overbearing if that if you take care of all of the 
the things that I mentioned. Um, but it is there, and to say that it's not would be very misleading. <laughs> so that's uh, number seven. Number eight, you have to ferret proof. Ferret proofing is so important, but ferret proofing is ongoing, ever changing, as if anything changes in your house, your setups, your whatever, you'll have to re ferret proof. If your, um, you know, your ferrets figure out how to get through your ferret proofing, you will have to re ferret proof. The thing about ferret proofing is that sometimes that can cause you to have to destroy your own stuff. I'll give you an example. Um, I had a sofa. I didn't want the ferrets to dig up underneath the sofa, but the only way really for me to prevent that from happening was to protect the bottom of the sofa, which means I had to flip my couch over and put, I use chicken wire. Some people use boards, but I had to basically um, rig my sofa so that they could not tear and get up inside of it. Uh, my fear was they would get up inside of it. I would sit on it. They would get crushed. I did not want that. So I doctored up my sofa <laughs> so that I wouldn't have to worry about that. They're also um, kind of destructive and that's part of the reason that people ferret proof as well, not only for their safety, but also for the protection of your items. If I let them in the living room, I have to ferret proof my entertainment center. The reason for that is the very first place that they wanna go is to the remote controls to all of our gaming systems. Um, and so basically PS4 is gonna, the controllers will have no buttons if I do not ferret proof. That's what they go after. They know they're there and that's what they want. So ferret proofing is, very, very much to protect your ferret. It's also very, very much to protect your valuables, the things that you want to not have destroyed, um, things that you don't want pooped on, those sort of things. But ferret proofing is forever changing. From experience, all the ferret proofing in the world, my ferrets, without fail, are always into something. Um, the minute, like I said, the minute I think I got it down, they find a way in or out or over or up or under or whatever. They're so smart. And when they're determined to do something, they will continue to try. Um, until they're successful or they will continue to try even if they're not successful. Um, example, my ferret Lucy would give anything in this world to get up underneath my bathroom sink. She really, really wants to, so I have two vanities. I have two, two sinks in my bathroom. One of them, they can get up underneath the vanity. There's nothing under there, no wires, no pipes, no plumbing, no nothing. It's just kind of an empty space and they love it and they hide all of all their, their toys in there and it's cool. The other sink um, is a cabinet and if they got inside of there, I, there's too many things in there that would hurt them. At this very moment as we speak, that cabinet is duct taped shut. It stays duct taped shut. And the reason for that is it had a child lock on it and my ferret dug at it so consistently that she busted the child lock. And now it doesn't child lock, so I had to duct tape it. So thank God for duct tape. The point is, is that I am forever having to tweak my ferret proofing because a lot of times they're really smart and they figure it out and once they've figured out how to do something that they're not supposed to do, they'll do it lots and lots and lots of times. Um, they're like children in that respect, except the difference is, is that they don't ever really learn not to do it, um, so they just keep doing it. So being able to ferret proof is important and I, I don't hesitate to say that ferret proofing can kind of have its own, come with its own set of cost. Um, I, again, I purchased, had to purchase baby gates and all kinds of stuff in order to properly ferret proof my home. And so that is also an expense. Um, and not ferret proofing costs me money because I have to replace controllers to gaming systems and core, you know, all kinds of stuff. So ferrets will um, get into stuff, they will steal your stuff, they will hide your stuff. And so ferret proofing is essential if you want to stop and stop that or just protect your items or, pre and also, it's also essential to ferret proof to protect your ferret. So number eight is the fun adventure of ferret proofing. So honestly, at this point, I feel like that's the major cons to owning a ferret. So um, I will say that there are, I'm gonna go over the pros really, really quickly because the pros are really quick and they're easy and they're fun. So I'm gonna start with the pros of just owning a ferret in general. Um, owning a ferret is really awesome because like I said, they have, e they have, well, they have amazing personalities. Their personalities are my absolute favorite thing about them. I love them so, so much and their personalities are all different. They're so unique, they're so funny and I just absolutely love their temperament and their personalities. Um, they're so smart. Ferrets are so incredibly smart. Um, they just, uh, they just learn things and they pick things up and it's really, really awesome to like watch them. They make me laugh, but they definitely don't miss a beat. 
and they are very, 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 very smart little creatures. So not only are they got great personalities, but they're intelligent on top of it. So who can beat those two qualities? Um, they're also very playful. They uh, definitely are super fun to watch. They'll play with you. They'll engage with you. They, um, they're just so funny. They're just so funny and so playful. And I love the way they hop. That hop thing just brightens my whole world. Um, I can honestly say that through all of the cons that I mentioned, I would not trade any of those for my ferrets. Watching them, being with them, spending time with them just brings me so much joy. They just add such a joy to my household. And my other animals also add joy to my household. Ferrets add joy in a way that I've really never experienced with other animals. They just bring a totally different type of um, dynamics to everything. And they're just so funny. I just can't, I smile when I talk about them. Like that's how they make me feel. So all the pros of owning ferrets is absolutely amazing. But I just really wanted to share with you guys the cons. It's really, really important that you weigh them and that you make a decision on owning a ferret, which can be a very long time commitment. Owning a ferret is a commitment that could last anywhere from five to eight or nine years. So that is a long time. And so you want to make sure that you know everything before you go in to ferret ownership. Um, and you just want to go in as, as, as informed as possible. So that's really all I have. If you guys like this video, please click the like button. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Have an amazing week. Love your ferrets. If you're thinking about getting ferrets, I really hope you make the best decision for you. And if your decision is to get a ferret, that is awesome. And if you decided not to get a ferret because you aren't ready at this time, I give, I have the utmost respect for you for being able to recognize that. That is amazing. Um, that is really important. And I love that people can say, you know what, maybe not now. Um, so thank you guys again, and I'll see you next time.